All right, to continue the contrast project, in order to save your processed photo, the first photo you've done, you go up to File, Save As, and you're going to name it with your name. So Carl, and I'm going to call it Contrast 1. This isn't what we're going to turn in, but this is just what we're using. And I'm going to save it as a PSD file to the desktop. If it's navigating somewhere else, you can hit Command D, it will navigate to the desktop. Once it's saved, I can close it. I can hit F11 to get back to the desktop, and I open up another one with Photoshop. Okay? Now, you need to remember your settings. So I did this sc screenshot of my settings, but that was after I took all the saturation out. The first thing I always do when I open up a new photo to process is I duplicate it, and I do that by hitting Command J. You can also go up to Layer and Duplicate Layer, but it will ask you this extra step of a of a naming it, but it will give us an exact copy. So I'm always just going to say Command J, and now we have another layer on top. The first thing I do is go to Image, Adjustments, and Levels. Everything, these top four, brightness, contrast, levels, curves, exposure, they adjust the values within the photo. Everything underneath that, between vibrance and color, look up, those adjust the colors. So we first deal with our levels. And this is a lot like brightness contrast, but it gives us the added benefit of being able to shift the midtones, and it shows us the histogram. So compared to my last photo, this is a much more balanced histogram because it wasn't against a white background. And so I see, even if I get push the whites up a little bit, I start to lose information. So I don't want to do that. And I can only deepen the darks just a little bit before I start losing information. But I can always safely try brightening the midtones or deepening the midtones and seeing what I like. And for this, I think it's about right where it is. So I say OK. Now I make a duplicate of this layer. I do that with Command J. On that duplicate, I go to Adjustments, and now I'm going to take the saturation out. So I go to Hue Saturation, and I take the saturation scale all the way down to, to negative 100. Now I make a duplicate of that, so I have four layers now, and I go back to Hue Saturation under Image Adjustments. And now is when I want to match the screenshot I took. So I want a hue of 32 and a saturation of 5. But I have to click on Colorize in order to put that color in. So a hue of 32, this is just my selection, and a saturation of 5. Okay. So Colorize is in the bottom right hand corner. And it's how you're allowed to put color into um, a desaturated image. Now, why did we shoot in color if we're just going to take all the saturation out anyway? The reason we shot in full color is because that uses all of the digital sensor instead of just the value sensors on your digital sensor. So you get better quality exposures when you shoot in full color, even when you're going to process into monochrome. OK, now I'm going to save this, save as. Carl Contrast 2 to the desktop as a PSD file. Close it. F11. Go to my last one. Open it with Photoshop. And we learn through repetition. So I bring it in. The first thing I do is duplicate my layer with Command J. Then I go to Image Adjustment Levels. And I'm kind of squinting, and I'm going to balance the histogram out. I can take my highlights quite a bit stronger without losing any visual information. Not so much with my shadows. And I can decide, do I want to push my midtones a little bit darker, or a little bit lighter, or right where I took the exposure, which would always be 1.00. And I think maybe just, just a touch lighter in this case. Now I make a duplicate of that. I go to Image Adjustments, Hue Saturation, take the saturation all the way down to zero. 
Make a duplicate of that. Go to Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation. Click on Colorize, and then match my settings from before. Where is it? I minimized it. Here it is. So 32 and 5. It's another reason having a sketchbook is handy as a photographer. You can make little processing notations. And that's because we want all of these photos to be side by side and all to look the same. All to look like they were processed in the same way. Now that looks like grayscale, but it's more than grayscale. It has a little bit of warmth to it. So to show you the difference, if I look at my history, that was pure grayscale with no color at all. That's with my hue saturation. Just a nice subtle warmth. And that's because whenever you see black and white photography, there's always some color choice. It either goes warm or it goes cool. Only bad prints from a black and white printer give you pure grayscale. So I'm going to save this as Carl Contrast 3 to the desktop. Hit save. Okay, now before closing it, well, yeah, I'll go ahead and close it. Just so you can see what you can now do. So I have all of my exposures here, and then I have my processed exposures here. Now I'm going to open up all three of them in Photoshop. So I select all three, and you can do that by drawing a box around, or if that's not working for you, click on one, hold down Command, and click on the others. It will add them to your selection. Right click, open them with Photoshop. Now let's see what they all look like next to each other. So I'm going to go to Window and Arrange and float them all in Windows. And the reason I do that is to pull them out of being in tabs, separate tabs here. So Window, Arrange, Float all in Windows. And then I can use a new shortcut to see them all on the screen together. And that is F9. F9 will give us all of the open program, open windows internally. And so yes, they all look like they're processed the same way. Now I want to identify the weakest one. So this has strong values. I squint, I see strong highlights that don't lose information, strong shadows that don't lose information. This has strong highlights, strong shadows, lots of values in between. I can see an easy way to crop that to a square. That showcases contrast. Easy way to crop this into a square. I squint at this one. It's got the values, but it doesn't have a lot moving up to the dark and it just feels kind of stuck in the middle. So I think this is my weakest one. And so I'm going to process another one, another one of my exposures, or maybe process it in a slightly different way and see if I can bring it up to the same level as the others. Because when you publish a series, you want them all to be equally strong. So try to identify the weakest link, close that one, keep the others open, and then I'm going to look at my other exposures. And I think with this one, my runner up, I think I might be able to get a more satisfying contrast shot. So this will be number four. I duplicate it. First, I do adjustment levels. I can bring up the highlights to about there. These are all very low light exposures without losing any of the content I want. But this just has more that, that goes between the blacks and the lights than the other one. Now another thing you can do here in levels, so I can shift my uh, midtones a little bit lighter or a little bit darker. I think I definitely want to go just a tiny bit lighter to bring out these different values. But you can also limit your, your values. So if I felt my, like my lights were just too strong overall, I could step them back a little bit here. And this is how you limit your contrast. So if I wanted to make it a, a medium contrast or a low contrast photo, I might use the output levels. And I might limit my highlights just a little bit, take the edge off a little bit. 
just like that. Okay, now I'm going to duplicate that. Go to image adjustment, hue saturation. Take the saturation all the way down to zero. Duplicate that. Image adjustment, hue saturation. Colorize. And it only takes me four times to remember what I did. So I did 32. A saturation of five. All right, so now I can float these in windows as well. So I say window arrange float all in windows. Hit F9 and see if I think that one can hold up a little bit better. Now here's the interesting thing. Since I'm cropping to a square, I think I can push the values on this one even more. And this is why I did duplicates. <coughs> because it's got the bright whites, but it's got them in a part of the photo that I'm probably not going to use in the crop. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to ignore this stuff. And so this is our next step. Let me save this quick. So I'm going to save it as Carl Contrast 4. But now I'm going to crop out a square from each of these photos. Okay, so now this is the next stage. And once I crop them, I need to save them as something different. So I'm going to use the crop tool. It's the fourth tool down. I need to make sure that everything up here is blank. Otherwise, it will limit what I can crop. And the new crop tool in this version of Photoshop, Photoshop CC, automatically gives me a crop window around my image. But I don't want that. So I'm going to immediately just hit return and then return again. And that allows me to now draw my own cropping. But I want it to be a perfect square. And the only way to do that is to hold down shift while I crop. So if I click and drag while holding shift, I can control my cropping. And then I can even rotate the crop. And what I love about this new version of Photoshop is notice that while I rotate it, it will keep it all within my photo. So it won't allow me to crop outside of my photo. And if I click in the middle, I can move that square around until I find just the, the right composition that will showcase all my contrast values. Maybe something like that. If I hold down shift, I can make it a little bit smaller, a little bit tighter. But whenever I change its size, I need to hold down shift. And the main benefit of cropping is that you can play with your composition. Now, once you start moving it around, you have to be careful because you can't accidentally go off of the frame. All right. Once you find your cropping, hit return. And then I'm going to do one more duplicate in layers. And I'm going to play with the levels just one more time now that it's cropped. And that allows me to bring them out a lot more just within this range. See, big difference in the values. And yet, I haven't lost any visual information, so nothing is too dark or too bright yet. Okay, so now this is cropped, so I have to save this now as Carl Crop 1, because this is the first one I've cropped. As a PSD to the desktop, save. And I'm going to do that to the others, but there's another step I need to do for all my cropped photos, because I need to make sure each cropped square is the same size. So I'll start that with the next demo.